welcome to BizTech on Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. So on today's edition, my colleague Mauli Aholumega sits with an entrepreneur to dissect the finance minister, Ken Oforiate's comments that graduates should venture into entrepreneurship because government's payroll is full. Let's take a look at the full report. Youth unemployment in Ghana has been a topic of concern for many years. Despite various initiatives by government to ensure that sustainable jobs are created, youth unemployment still remains a challenge. Recently, the Finance Minister Ken Oferiata made a suggestion to young job seekers to venture into entrepreneurship, as he indicated that the government's payroll was full. But is this the right way to go, or is not? I'll table this for a conversation with an entrepreneur on this week's edition of BizTech. I'll take a quick break and I'll introduce my guest. My name is Maoli Aholmega. Welcome to our break. Henry AJ is my guest on this week's edition of This Tech. Henry is also the Chief Executive Officer of Tent Maker, which is an entrepreneurship hub for budding entrepreneurs. Henry, welcome to This Tech on Ghana Rock TV. Good to see you again. How are you? I'm good, Maui. How are you? I'm doing very well. Yeah, so let's just address the elephant in the room. I'm sure you are familiar with the finance minister's most recent comments asking job seekers to venture into entrepreneurship. His reason is government's payroll is full. What are your initial thoughts on, on those comments? Well, I mean, government has a responsibility when it comes to job creation. And so usually you would want to make sure the government has a certain um, plan for for those who are unemployed. Um, I I when you when you listen to the comments in the in its initial form, it will suggest that the platform that was given to him were for people who had just completed. I'm just wondering how at that point they can they can do something about unemployment. But even before we go, just just let me just give a bit of clarification. Um, usually there is this. This challenge with um, self-employment and entrepreneurship, mm. they are two different things. Okay. I guess people would have to get understand that. Um, an entrepreneur is somebody who finds solutions and puts in a, when there's a problem, look at what solution can be used and then turn that solution into a business venture. That is either for profits or for any social benefits, right? Mm. But so an entrepreneur, even though sometimes in the initial stages will create employment for themselves, they create employment beyond themselves, right? Um, but when you are self-employed, you look for something that will just take care of you. Um, and I guess I want to believe that what the finance minister is saying that go and create your own employment, right? So be self-employed instead of being entrepreneurs. Uh, unless he's saying that the individuals must create jobs for other people. Then in that context, we can say that um, maybe, yes, it's true that it, it will be, but I think that uh, it's not a bad advice, only that he represents government and, and, and therefore we hold government accountable when there are some of these things. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that government has a huge responsibility when it comes to um, generating employment for, for citizenry. Okay, very well said. But does entrepreneurship combat on, on, unemployment? Well, I mean, entrepreneurship is basically a solution. You know, when you're looking for um, um, solution, you're creating enterprises, you use human resource, okay? Um, the, you see, the challenge even now is that there could be a lot of entrepreneurs in the system. Mm. They may be creating jobs, but you will need to ask yourself whether the jobs meet the kind of human resource we have in the system, mm. right? Because there are a lot of these things. I remember when there was the discovery of oil, right? Um, I remember that time I was in South Africa and a friend of mine said, well, it means that we're going to get a lot of people getting jobs. But you and I know that when those jobs came from the oil sector, very few Ghanaians had access to that. And mm -hmm. so you're asking yourself, what exactly 
is government's role in that aspect. But, but to answer the question directly, yes, entrepreneurship can help combat a bit of the unemployment situation. Um, and, and I think that but government has a bigger role to give the enablement mm. um, that, that will give that entrepreneurs the boost. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with this report. The World Bank in a, in a 2020 report ident- indicated that Ghana had 12% of its youth unemployed and 50% of youth underemployed. Shouldn't, be, shouldn't we be worried about these numbers? Well, um, I, I'm, usually I'm not really uh, sure about the accuracy of some of these numbers that are turned mm-hmm. out, but the, we should be worried when we find out that a lot of the populace are um, not employed or underemployed. Now, mm. see, there's a huge challenge, especially when we say that we have a youthful population. Mm. And then the population that is energetic doesn't have anything to do. Mm. We find out that there is a lot of, you know, when you have excess energy, you, you know, personally, when you have excess energy, it creates bloating for you. So mm. if you have excess energy, you need, you need to find something to do with. And that yeah. is a challenge. See, yeah. Mauli, um, when this government started its program, the NDIP program in 2017, Mm. A lot of us were excited because there was an enablement. The government had given yeah. us an enablement such that the desire for people to create was rising. Mm. In fact, between 2017 and now, the number of hubs that have sprung up in the country, it's, it's, it's enormous, right? Mm. But I'm not too sure the reason why the Ministry of Business Development was crapped and the reason why the NEIP seemed not to be really um, yeah. engaged anymore. But that was a good initiative that if you say that bring some initiative on board, you must create the noble enablement for people to want to create, mm. right? So I think that, you know, when the finance minister just say that, go and be an entrepreneur, what mm. is the enablement? What is the yeah. government fuel? What is the government doing to let me have the comfort you know, to say, I want to create jobs. Yeah. But in our context, because of the system we are running, it is, a, it is much more burdensome. So mm-hmm. I, I think that's, that, that's one of the challenges that we have. Then. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I want to come to the initiatives. Like you mentioned a few, which are the NAPCO, NEIP, um, the youth. There's a new one coming up, which is the Youth Bank. You know, that's for to sort of get um, school graduates into entrepreneurship and all of that. Sometimes they all sound very good on paper. And over the last four years, we've had some reports coming in that, hey, okay, we are, we are engaged in this initiative, but we're not being paid. Should, should we be concerned that it's moving towards more of a, 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 just a slogan without that sustainability bit? It's not moving ahead of that next chapter where we know that, okay, these initiatives that we've come out and roll out in our manifestos and all of that, they are sustainable ones. Right. Um, see, governance is a very difficult thing. Mm. <laughs> Especially when you need, when you have very little resources and you have a huge challenge that you want to care. Mm. And so I remember vividly when this government started, you know, talking about the process and the program that they wanted to implement. I said, their challenge will be that if they do a lot of things within a period of time that they don't have the resources to create, it will be a problem. Mm-hmm. See, NEIP just um, and the business development ministry lasted for just four years. Yeah. It's trapped. So mm-hmm. we didn't even have a chance to review it. Yeah. You know, there, there was nothing that could let you do that work. We did it four years. Let's see the system. Let's see how it is, you know, helping the society or helping the young people. And now it is undertone. So that's for me is a challenge. I mean, as for NAPCO, I guess the government itself knows that it is not sustainable. It is just a bridge form of employment. And I think that there are a whole lot of things that people have, can do, especially with this graduate. People have initiatives. Mm. Remember when we were talking, last time when we were talking about what the expectation of um, the budget should be. Yeah. I mentioned that the government's, government must create a fund that will help boost entrepreneurship, mm. right? There are a whole lot of challenges when people want to venture into entrepreneurship. And, and that is what the government must look at. Mm. And there is an ecosystem that is developing. Mm. If you are not so careful in developing its rights, and then you just start and start and you never get progress done. 
Yeah. Right. So okay. I, I think that most of the initiatives are great, but the implementation doesn't seem to have a review plan. Mm. Right. It, it just goes to a point and then it ends. I mean, you remember we used to have youth employment agency. What happened yes, to it? Okay. Yeah. Right. And then it metamorphosed into NEIP. Now NEIP seems to be under control because it was an administry. The ministry mm. is scrapped. So it means that that agency doesn't seem to have anything again. When you engage with those guys, they will tell you that they don't have funding anymore. Hmm. Right. So there's a lot of challenges that is going on in terms of this, this initiative. And I think that that's one area the government must look at instead of just, you know, bringing them out without any, any form of sustainability. Okay. Henry, thank you very much. Let me take a quick break and then we'll be right back. I've been speaking with Henry AJ and he's the chief executive officer of Tent Maker and also an entrepreneur as well. And we've been discussing how entrepreneurship could combat unemployment. We'll be right back after this break. Powers and principalities. There's so much fire inside me. Tragedy struck when part of the largest hillside at the kosher rubbish dump collapsed. Welcome off for that break. Harry AJ is my guest on this week's edition of This Tech. And we've been unpacking entrepreneurship. Harry, thank you so much for staying with us. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I want to come to the cost of funding, which is the most important thing for most entrepreneurs. They are always concerned that they are not able to access funding. Banks wouldn't give them loans. There's no money in the system. How can they go into entrepreneurship without any money? Because it's cost a lot of money to be an entrepreneur. What are your thoughts on that? Molly, there are, I've always told entrepreneurs that there are three forms of funding when you're looking at entrepreneurship. Mm. Bank loan doesn't even come to the fore when you're going into starting a business because you are not even there yet. Mm. Bank loan or any form of loan, it's, it's, it's very active. When I say active, it means that when that somebody gives you a loan, the person requires you to pay back whether you make profit or not. Now, when you are starting in a business, you have very little understanding of how the market will open. Even if you have done your research, because the product itself or the service itself, getting to the market and getting accepted takes a whole lot of time. Mm. And therefore, you need to know what kind of funding you can, you have, you can um, have access to. So I, I guess that there, there are two arms to this question. The first one is, the entrepreneur's readiness for this fandom. Mm. Now, I've, I've had the, the situation when there are a lot of funding available and then you have entrepreneurs who are not ready by mm. the state that they are, um, even the other by their team or by mm. the level of the service of product they need to offer or mm. even by the, the, the understanding of the market itself. Mm. So the huge challenge when it comes to the entrepreneur's readiness Mm. And readiness is not just saying, I want money. Readiness in terms of you understand the numbers behind, you understand the market size, you understand the, the, the access to whatever, what the demand is. You understand the supply flow of mm. whatever you need to deliver. And if you don't have that, sometimes you ask the basic question about the structure of the business and entrepreneurs mm. cannot tell you. And yet they say, I need funding. Now, mm. if I come to you and I say, I need money from you, before you dish out your money to you, you need to be sure, even if it is for social benefit, you need to be sure that there's a certain impact you generate from whatever you're giving to me, right? And mm -hmm. that's one of, the, the, one of the key challenge of a developing ecosystem like Ghana, right? So that is a huge burden, especially when you're looking at funding from external sources. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to the cost of funding itself, now that is the reason why it, there is a huge cost when it comes to starting up a business because the risk is high. And if you know how economics is, it had the returns, yeah. it had the, the, yeah. the, the, 
the, the investment, right? Yeah. If the, the investment is high. Uh, you want to make sure that the risk is high. Yeah. The return is high, high right? Yeah. Right. So, so I, I just think that the cost is high because of the level, right? Because of the uncertainty, because of the risk at the level of the business now. And that is why when you see a big business that already has charted their income flow, they know their chart of account, they know where their source of revenue is. You see banks chasing them instead. Why? Because they know that they have been to establish how to get them paid. And that mm -hmm. is worldwide. It's not only in Ghana. Right. So I think that um, there's a huge cost because of the nature of entrepreneurship. Okay. The fact that the risk is high at the beginning stage, mm -hmm. and especially when you have somebody who doesn't even understand a lot more of the ecosystem that you are playing within, the risk will be high and access will be very difficult. That's okay. why we have companies coming. And that is why government comes in. That is where government comes in. And government says that let's promote entrepreneurship. Government must create a certain funding opportunity. I remember there was DACF some time back. I'm not too sure whether the assemblies are able to disperse some assemblies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most yeah. recently, PIAC came, came with a report and they had indicated that yeah. some monies that were expected to go to the Digital Assembly Commons Fund never got to them. So the finance ministry is yet right. to come out and formally pay them the money because they always have to come up, come into the public and say that they don't have enough money to do conduct some of their projects. So they are also right. a bit cash strapped as well. But when you see Molly, that's also even another part of the financial management system of our governance. Mm. Even the DS, the management of it is a problem. Yeah. Me. I mean, the monitoring, you know, in our country, the challenge is monitoring. Yeah. Right. And 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 that's why I said that in interesting, most of the initiative that this government took from the beginning of its of its reign. That looks like it had to help. How mm. this trap? So sometimes you're not so sure how the rhetoric are going to turn into something. Mm. And, and that's for me that's a challenge. Mm. Okay. Henry, so you, I, I, I know you're an entrepreneur. You are actually a chief executive officer of Tent Maker. First, what do you guys do at Tent Maker and how is Tent Maker doing? Well, I mean, um, post COVID, we are still in recovery mode. Um, <laughs> But also because of the nature of our ecosystem, it looks like um, if you need to train entrepreneurs, a lot of things happen. So first, Tent Maker does three things. So we are um, an entrepreneurship enablement uh, um, ecosystem support organization. By incubation means that if you have any idea you want to start a business, we mm. help you through the process to be able to identify your market niche, to mm -hmm. understand your, your, your structure of your business itself to run whatever solution you are bringing about. Mm -hmm. And we also involve in acceleration. So the business has started, how do you grow? How do you expand it? It's one of the things that we do. Uh, and the third one is that we create a co an enablement for people to work. So we have a co-working space where people would want to come together and work. So that's what tends to that. Okay. Um, so like I said, we're still in recovery mode. Um, and, and that is because of the challenge of entrepreneurship. People who have ideas do have funding. You know, now if you are an enablement or if you're enabling that, you need to be able to create them and bring them up to the level where they can get the funding. Mm. And that is where normally you need some sort of support to get yeah. you there. Mm. And, and that, is, that is a challenge in the ecosystem right now. Okay. All right, Harry. Thank you so much for your time. This has been a very insightful conversation. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've been speaking with Harry AJ, and he's a chief executive officer of Tent Maker, which is an entrepreneurship hub. We've been unpacking the recent comments by the finance minister. And we've also been talking about entrepreneurship and how to come how we can use entrepreneurship to combat unemployment. This has been this week's edition of This Tech on Ghana Web TV. My name is Mari Ahonwega. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Maulia Holumega, for that report. Up next is Biz Headlines. <music> to our very first story, Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Baumia has said Ghana has entered an agreement with the global technology giant, Google. 
the agreement according to him, we'll see the incorporation of the country's digital addressing system in its Google mapping system. Speaking at the opening ceremony of the Youth Connect Africa Summit in Accra, Dr. Baumia said the agreement was reached after a technical evaluation by Google to certify Ghana's digital addressing system was conducted. We've engaged Google since last year and we have now ob obtained their agreement because they had to go through the technical processes to evaluate our digital address system. So by the end of this year, Google has agreed for us to integrate our digital address system into Google Maps so that people can use them here in Ghana. Away from that, the Ghana Road Safety Authority has asked vehicle owners to brace themselves for the payment of a new road safety toll levy. According to the authority, the earlier toll levy proposal did not work out because Ghanaians really kicked against it. Speaking to the media, the Director for Programs and Planning at the National Road Safety Authority, Kwame Adontin, said drivers would have to bear this new cost when they are going for the roadworthy renewal at the Driver and Vehicle License Authority, DVLA. According to him, new car owners would also pay when they are going for roadworthy registration, adding that the commission is considering the new payment to be between five cities to one hundred between five cities to one fifty cities, depending on the type of car. Information Minister Kojo Opo Nkrumah has reiterated that the private sector has the capacity to absorb the country's teeming youth seeking for job opportunities. According to him, even though a vibrant public sector can provide some number of employment, the main purpose of the government is to create an enabling environment for entrepreneurs to flourish in the private sector. He argued that even the most efficient public service cannot be a substitute for the role that the private sector and entrepreneurship play in helping answer the questions of economic fortunes as a nation. He said, orienting our people that it lies within our own hands to innovate, develop technologies and solutions that make our society better off, as against waiting for an expansion of the public sector to accommodate all our interests, is a challenge, which, however, we have not met very well as a nation. Orienting our people that entrepreneurship, innovation, and technology lie within our own hands, that we need to develop our own technologies and solutions that will make our society better off, as against waiting for an expansion of the public sector to accommodate all our interests, is a challenge, however, which we have not met well enough. President Nanado Dankwe Kufuado has disclosed that the collapsed Komenda Sugar Factory will be revived in February next year. According to him, Trade and Industry Minister Alan Tremantin is working tirelessly to ensure that there are raw materials available to run the factory. He accused the previous government of not properly managing the factory, hence leading to its collapse. Speaking on PCFM's Coco Crow Morning Show, Monitored by Ghana Web, President Ekufuado said what Alan Tremantin is doing now is to reconfigure the investment in such a way that he has now access also the raw material supply for the factory. He said, God willing, by February next year, we would have got the Commander Sugar Factory working. This is the target that we have. To our final story, Ghana is likely to return to IMF for financial assistance should the increasing public debt stock persist, an economist and fixed income strategist has cautioned. At the moment, the country's public debt stock stands around 336 billion cities ending July 2021, a figure that could hamper economic growth and recovery efforts. As a result of this, Nevo Mandinka, who is a Johannesburg-based economist and fixed income strategist at the first round bank believes Ghana at this point needs to present a credible plan B on how they fund the budget in the absence of eurobond issuance, adding that do they still have access to the eurobond market at these levels? Could they issue one at a reasonable price? The answer seems to be no. In a worst-case scenario where debt is growing amid a global risk of mood, 
Ghana may have to head back to IMF, the economist is quoted in a Bloomberg survey. <laughs> That's all for today. Keep watching Ghana Web TV for more. Before we go, do log on to www.ghanaweb.com for more stories. Do well to follow us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Ghana Web. On YouTube, Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. Do have a lovely weekend. <laughs>